The Red Berets, apparently the EFF is, is outraged. What do you make of it? Well, it adds to the excitement. I think this is the one election, in my view, uh, that's going to be probably the most exciting since 1994. Mm -hmm. Never before have I seen ANC leaders so fired up but at the same time, so nervous, not as quietly nervous, because they would approach journalists and ask them, what do you think? Do you think we're going to lose the numbers, but we're trying our best and so on? So it's a, the, the sort of juxtaposition of humility and pride is, for me, uh, quite interesting and something I haven't seen in the 20 years of our democracy, having covered every election in this country. So the red berries that we saw today, the tough talk we saw from President Zuma, but also other leaders like Deputy President of the ANC, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the chairperson, speaking to the various issues that have been raised by journalists, by analysts, that these are the Achilles heel, so to speak, um, of the ANC. And they are speaking directly to them and uh, unashamedly uh, uh, so and, and not really afraid to actually say, I mean, even, even in Gandhra, people speaking very openly about in Gandhra in a manner that the Treasurer General of the ANC has never uh, spoken before. So it looks like it's going to be exciting. And I think the red berries and, 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 and the language we saw actually is, is, going to, is going to make this one really one election to look forward to. Well, that is interesting. And there are other Achilles heels. The, the e-tolls in, in Gauteng, for instance, um, uh, the, the labor disputes that some say is affecting investment, uh, the, the rebellion from NUMSA. Do you believe the ANC will, will face these issues head on? Well, from, from the things that were said today and from what one is speaking up, from uh, speaking to individual um, members of the National Executive Committee, I think a decision has been taken that, look, what we haven't been able to win up until now. In other words, those members of the Tripartite Alliance who are not with us, let's count our losses. Those issues we have not been able to address, let's ask for more mandate to actually fix those wrongs. In other words, what hasn't been done hasn't been done. Let's talk about our track record of the past 20 years, which the ANC believes is a spectacular one and one that should make every reasonable or any reasonable South Africa feel proud of being South African, but also feel proud of being led by the ANC. Whether, of course, um, or how many people People will believe that is uh, or remains a moot point. Mm. But this is also, all this is coming at about, at a time when the ANC, I think for the first time, because even with COPE, ANC was not as concerned as it looks to be uh, around the emergence of the EFF, for example. Um, the ANC hasn't been, now the ANC leaders haven't been excited, but also fearful of a reality that, and of course, it's difficult for them to really admit some of these things publicly, because to admit some of them is to actually concede that a lot of wrongs are being done at certain quarters, something at this point, the ANC is not prepared to confront, except to say we will fix the wrongs later on. If, if the EFF is a, a threat, surely that will bring economics even more into to the fore. And, and I want to ask you, will the ANC have a tough time looking at its economic record? We haven't seen the, the huge unemployment rate move in recent years, and it will have to look at the past if it wants to say uh, we can do better this year. Well, I mean... Unemployment, the issue of unemployment is one of five issues that uh, the ANC president, Jacob Zuma, calls the apex priorities. This, the, and this administration actually identified unemployment as, a, as an issue to tackle. But as everybody knows, it hasn't been successful in doing so. So members of the ANC, the, like themselves, want to know, want that report from the ANC as to why they haven't created the jobs that they promised to create. Eight. On the other hand, you have your EFFs and your DAs prepared to exploit that uh, fully, and they can stick to rhetoric. They don't have to go beyond that to be able to perhaps convince the masses of South Africans that they are a better alternative. But that said, nobody, no analysts, and a lot of people who have been observing um, this space over the past 20 years do not believe that these new uh, kids on the block, but also those who have been around, who have been 
growing throughout, like the DA, actually have what it takes to actually unseat um, the ANC. But the sense is there that to some extent, the ANC is going to be humiliated by numbers going down. Now, it's winning the election with a much less margin than the ANC would have thought. So that tough talk by President Jacob Zuma today is that to say that the ANC is going uh, to rule for a very, very long time, I think uh, speaks to those issues that, on the one hand, they must put up that brave face, uh, a facade, some would say, mm -hmm. that says, we are going to do this. Let no one convince you otherwise. But on the other hand, they there is a very real fear that we may have done a lot of things wrong. I mean, the ETOLs remain an issue, but I don't see the ANC making an about 10, certainly from what uh, members of the National Executive Committee are saying. There are issues around the National Development Plan, which both the, a the, the SACP and COSATU are unhappy about, but I think the ANC is convinced that it has managed to win the majority of uh, our people and leaders within those alliance uh, organizations over to say to them, okay, let's pack these matters now, but rest assured we will deal with them as soon as possible after the election. Well, that, that brings me to my final question. Will the ANC push the National Development Plan that is more favoured by business than, than Labour? And, and will it really push this youth wage subsidy and, and the possible benefits? Well, I mean, by the by, Cosatu and the SACP's own admissions, there are more points of agreement than there are uh, points of disagreement. The issues are around the economic and labour market clauses um, of the or, or sections of the National Development Plan. So it's not it's not everything. So uh, hence they were given a go ahead at the tripartite alliance um, um, earlier, like months ago, where they said. You could go ahead and implement the areas where there is consensus over, but let's deal with the issues that are outstanding. But what hasn't helped the process or the alliance partners is the fact that the task team that was supposed to thresh out those outstanding issues never dealt with them, in fact, never met, let alone even deal with them, and that put a spanner in, in the works. But on the other hand, the ANC was able to turn around and say, but you were having your own problems, which made it difficult, if not impossible, for us to actually confront these issues. We're talking here about the, the, what is happening within COSATU. So it's a, it's a, it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a balancing act that I think the ANC is going to win at the, at the, end, of, at the end of the day. All right, thank you so much, Vuyo Mvoko, our contributing editor, live for us there from Nelspray.